Hey everyone, this is Matt with Motion VFX, and we are releasing M Essentials to DaVinci Resolve. This is pretty much an all in one pack that has all of your essential graphics and effects, transitions, titles, even some logo animations. So, lots of stuff to play with. Let's go ahead and take a look inside of DaVinci Resolve. All right, so after you install M Essentials, you can locate it under your effects library. Under Video Transitions, Motion VFX, M Essentials, you'll see we have 11 transitions right here. Coming down to Titles, we also have some buttons, infographics, intros, tools, and typography. So things like titles, lower thirds, subtitles, lists, things like that. And then finally coming down here to effects, we've also got three overlays and five of these placeholders and split screens. So I'm gonna come up to the top and click on toolbox and just search for essentials. And this will let me look at everything in the pack all in one spot. So I'm gonna start off with these overlays. So we've got a couple of these really useful blurred frame effects. You can hover over these and kind of preview what they'll look like over your footage. There's a radial blur, kind of gives you this dizzy type of effect. And there's also this letterbox here. Now, by the way, if you wanted to affect multiple clips at the same time or like a whole section or your whole timeline, the best way to do this would probably be to use an adjustment clip. So grab one of these and just stretch this out over whatever clips that you want to affect. And then I'll just drag this letterbox effect right onto the adjustment clip. And there you can see it kind of animates in like this and it will give all of these shots this nice letterbox. Now, this particular effect lets you adjust the thickness as well as the softness and also the color of the letterbox. So I'm actually going to delete that for now. Now let's take a look at these placeholders. So I ended up using this avatar to kind of put myself, which is this bottom track down here. I put myself in a little bubble. So what I could do is hold alt and drag this straight up to the top shot like this. And I'm just gonna trim this down, something like that. And I'll take the very end of this and trim it down like this. Now, these all have some animation, and if I simply just drag this straight onto the shot here, you can see that there is no animation, even though I've got my in and out animations over here enabled. This is, of course, because our clip is actually starting over here to the left. And if we drag it to the very beginning, then we will actually see that animation. But if we wanted the clip to start here with that animation, what we actually want to do is delete the effect here, and let's right click and make this into a compound clip. And now it will actually start right here and end right there. So if I drag this avatar effect onto that compound clip, now you can see it kind of animates in and animates out. And with this particular effect, we can go over here to the content controls, maybe size this down, push this towards the bottom, something like this. You can see I'm not totally in the center of that bubble, so we can go to the effects controls to fix this. So maybe we'll want to scale down the footage like that and slide the mask position so that I'm a little bit more in the center and we'll just kind of recenter that a bit like that. Now, a couple of these other placeholders will actually take advantage of multiple clips. So if I come down here to this area of my timeline, you can see I've got these four clips stacked on top of each other. And if I take this placeholder preset number two, this will actually use four clips. So the way this works is we're gonna go ahead and select this stack of footage, and I've made sure that they're all the same duration. So I'm gonna select them all, right click, and choose new fusion clip. And then I'll just take this placeholder effect number two and drag it right onto that fusion clip. You can see this creates this really nice presentation with all of those clips together. And if you go to the content controls, this will allow you to adjust all three of these at the same time. So you can scale them down. You can position them if you wanted to have more room for a title, for example. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and reset these to their defaults. And then down here under media controls, this is where you can adjust the cutouts. So you can change the mask height like this, as well as the width. And each individual media cutout has its own position controls if you wanted to kind of offset them a little bit or even position the clips inside of the mask. So you can see this over here, this third one, probably needs to be more like this so that my hand is more center to that frame. And I might wanna also adjust the center frame there so that maybe I appear a little bit more in that shot. And what I really like about this effect is actually these background controls. So if you disable this, it doesn't actually disable the background, it just disables the color that you have over the background. So right now, if I have this off, this is just gonna give us the exact same color of the original clip. But what's kind of cool about this is uh, you got this fade control. So if you increase this, you just get a solid color, but you can also kind of choose like a specific color. And I could see this really being useful if you wanted to create like a commercial or some sort of brand video where you wanted to have a little bit of your accent color representing the brand's color. 
All right, so let's move on to these buttons. So there are six of these. They're kind of nice little calls to action that you can sort of add to your composition like this. So this is number three. It has these two text boxes, which you can control with the title controls as well as the subtitle controls. And you can even change the color. So it's just a nice little minimal animation there. And I also wanted to show you this social media icon. I'm just going to grab one of these and layer this right on top. So this one actually has a few different logos to choose from. If you come over here under logo controls, you've got all the popular social media platforms right here. And you can see it kind of flips around like a coin. Now, something I want to point out with this, if you wanted to make this bigger, you can see if I just take my content scale and go a little bit too far, it kind of looks a little pixelated, right? So if you wanted to go something this big, what you could actually do is take your logo scale and just stretch this out. And you can notice this doesn't actually get pixelated as quickly. And then you can also come down to the box controls and increase the height and width. And that's just going to give you a little bit of a sharper scale if you wanted to have a giant logo like this. And you probably don't want something this big, but I just wanted to point that out in case you reach for the content scale and you get some pixelation. This is really meant to do some kind of fine tune adjustments. Okay, moving on to infographics. These are super useful. We've got some callouts. We have a couple of these cards with some information that you could fill in. Card number two is kind of cool. It has this growing scale. And this one actually has this percentage bar. So if you come over here to the number controls, you can adjust this number and it will update the percentage as well as give you kind of an accurate proportion that matches that percentage. So if we did 50%, you can see it's right there in the middle. So kind of some smart math going on here. And you can see there is this suffix. If you didn't want that for some reason, you could simply just delete it or add your own suffix. And these are all really useful for displaying some information. I really like this numbers because it kind of goes through two different colors. So let's drag this and just layer this right on top of one of these shots. And this one also has the number control. So you can slide your value around like this. You can see it stops at 793, but you can also type in something much larger if you needed to, and it will count up to that number. And you can see it also fades through these two different colors right here. So we can choose what color it starts with and the color that it ends with. And then it kind of fades through both of those colors. So you can see this one starts yellow and slowly starts to fade to that blue. Okay, moving on to these intros. Now these are basically like ready to go intros with a lot of customization. So for example, I'm gonna grab number two here and let's just replace these social media icons. So you can see this one starts with the footage, but then this word comes in with our footage inside of that word. You can come over here to title controls and customize this. And then under the subtitle control, if I keep playing this, you'll see another word kind of rolls in on this rectangle. You can of course customize this too. And then if you come down to the third one, you can see this one kind of fills the screen and then the third subtitle animates in like this. And then finally at the end, it rolls up to reveal the footage underneath. So you can kind of use this to create a really easy intro just by having one shot here then let it go through the text that you want to customize and then it reveals your next shot. Of course, you could have the same shot, but I think it's a kind of cool way to hide a cut and sort of use this as a integrated title transition. Number four is really clever too. Let's go ahead and just replace this one. Now this one has an input for a logo. And of course you can customize the text here and then under logo controls, you can browse for a logo here. I'll just choose our M Essentials logo. And you can also stretch the duration now and it won't change the speed, but it'll just pause on your main logo until it needs to complete the outro animation. So this makes it really flexible if you need to fill a specific gap on your timeline or fit your intro to a specific music track. We could even combine this with a few of these tools. So let's come down here and we've got things like these arrows which kind of animate and draw on. I really like these three arrows. You can actually change the number of these. Let me go ahead and make a little bit more room and let's just drag these arrows right over our intro. Maybe we'll stagger them a little so that the logo comes in and then these arrows maybe sort of point to them. Let's go to the content controls and I'm just gonna rotate this whole thing 90 degrees and let's scale it down and move it down like this. And under the arrow controls, you can also change the number of copies as well as the spread. And these kind of trace on nicely like that. 
We also have things like chapters. This is a great thing to add to the beginning of a podcast episode, for example, or just a normal YouTube video. And what's really cool about this one is each of these dashes will automatically update with the number of items you have on this list. So if I go over here to my text controls and just hit enter and add another line, you can see it automatically added this dash here to compensate for the number of lines that we have written in our paragraph. Okay, let's move on to typography. So we've got some lower thirds, subtitles, main titles, even some lists. And these are pretty self-explanatory. You can, of course, customize the text, the font, the color, all that sort of thing. Now, I want to grab title number two here, and let's actually put this right over here on this second shot right there. Now, I want to show you a cool trick you can do, and this works with any kind of title or graphic. Let's say, for example, I wanted to mask my footage over this title. There are a bunch of different ways to do that. Of course, I could you know, duplicate this shot and put it above and then mask the footage. I think the easiest way to do this is actually to go into Fusion with my title. So with my playhead right on top of this title, I'm just going to click on Fusion. And from here, you can see we've got our title and our media out. This is what's rendering our title back to the edit page. So I want to bring the media that's on the timeline into this comp. So the way I'm going to do that is hit shift space bar and type in media in and the media in node will be red by default because we don't have any media in here. So if I go over here to media source, if I simply change this to background, this will actually pull through the footage that I have underneath the title on the edit page. And so what I could do with this is use a map control. So I'm going to select my title, come over here to the toolbar and just click on the map control. And if I grab an output from my media out with the right click, and then I'm going to let go on the map control and I get this context menu, I'm going to drop this into the garbage mat input. And then over here in the inspector with my map control, I'm going to come down to garbage mat. And instead of using the alpha channel to create a mat, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to luminance. And this works particularly well with this shot because I've got this black shirt on. So we can create a mask based on that luminance difference. And we've got our high and low sliders right here. So I'm going to kind of clamp these a little bit like that. And it's a little hard to see what we're doing. So what I could also do is take my output from my media out and connect it to the output of this media in node. This will automatically create this merge node. And if I take this and view it like this, you can see that we can take a look at our footage and the title all together. Now keep in mind, the media out node is what's rendering the title. Anything that happens after this is only here just to view on the Fusion page. So if we go back to the edit page, it looks the same, but if we go back into Fusion again, you can see that it's going to default back to the media out node because that's what this Fusion comp is rendering. We're simply just merging the output of media out over the original shot here just so that we can look at this while we're manipulating the settings. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on clamping these values a little bit. And you can see it's doing kind of the opposite of what I want to do. So I'll just click this invert button. And now you can see we've got this mask perfectly around myself and the title. So we can go back to the edit page, let that cache. So a really nice way to integrate this in with your shot and just make it look a little bit more thoughtful. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at these transitions. So you can always hover over with these to kind of get a preview of how they will look. So we've got this fade transition, which sort of moves the footage while also giving you this dip to black. You can change that color right over here with the fade controls. So we could fade to white if we wanted to. You can flip the direction and also go from horizontal or vertical. So I'm a pretty big fan of subtle transitions like this. I think you can use these in a wide variety of projects. We also have this frame slide transition. This one will slide left to right and kind of round out your footage. And you can go over here to the transition controls and flip the direction. You can also change the roundness of those frames and the blur amount. A few of these actually have text integrated into the transition itself. So for example, if I wanted to go from this talking headshot to this shot here. Right now they're on two separate tracks, so I can't add a transition, but I can simply just grab this and move it right down like this. And let's grab this text zoom out transition and just put that right in between those two shots. And right now it's a little bit too close to this other text, so I might want to grab this and make it happen a little bit earlier. So it kind of has this nice little zoom out with this stenciled text. Of course, you can go over here to the text controls and change this. 
So lots of fun stuff with this pack. I think its biggest strength is its versatility. So, I mean, you could use this with Instagram reels and TikToks, documentaries, music videos, films, pretty much anything. There's something in there for every single project. So hope you check it out. It's available right now for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. You can check that out in the link in the description. That's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video.